Okay, Excel friends, now we're going to work a little bit with fill patterns. We actually have two parts to this particular set of exercises, just to see a little bit more of the patterns that we can expect, and then how we can work with some of the functions that are built into Excel uh, in order to get the patterns that we want. So uh, we're gonna head over here, and I want you to click on Fill with Patterns. And we're gonna take a look at the kind of patterns that are created when we don't get the patterns that we expect, and then how we might be able to work around and get the patterns that we want. And I'm going to highlight uh, cell A1 and A2 here. Now I can see that I've got a numeric pattern here, so I go from 1 to 2. Let's see if Excel picks this up. So I'm going to move my cursor to the fill handle here in the lower right hand corner. Then I'm going to drag down and I'll go down to about 20 and let go. And sure enough, it increments this by 1. So that's looking great. Now what happens if I do that in B1 and B2? So I've highlighted and selected B1 through B2. That's A and B. Now that's a letter pattern. So I would hope when I drag down in here down to 20 that it would increment the letters in alphabetical order. And unfortunately it doesn't do that. It just repeats the pattern that I've selected A, B, A, B, A, B all the way down. Hmm. What about if I select from cell C1 through C3 and drag down? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to highlight that and then drag that down to C20. And whoa, I see something that's entirely unexpected here. It actually, for some reason, averages things up and then it continues to uh, repeat the 1.3 value all the way to the end. So that's unexpected. What about if I highlight uh, this pattern here, which is 1, 2, 1, 2 in the range D1 through D4? So I'm going to click on my fill handle and drag down below here. And again, this is also an unexpected set of results. So it's important to sort of pay attention to the kinds of results you're going to get. Now you might say, hey, well, what do I do if I want to repeat the pattern over and over again? Well, we can actually use copy and paste. So I'm going to click in E1 and then drag down to E4. I'm going to copy on Mac, that's Command C. On Windows, it would be Control C. And notice what I've copied here. It's got these sort of little walking ants around it to say this is the range that you've copied. Now I'm going to move my cursor down. I'm just using my down arrow key here, but you could select this as well. Down to E5, I'm going to hold down my Shift key now that I'm in E5, and I'm going to continue to go all the way down to uh, cell E20. And again, there's no reason why you couldn't just have clicked and dragged. And if I press enter here, this is the same as pasting in. Notice what happens. I get one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So it did take the pattern that I have in the first four and it just repeated it over and over and over again, all the way down. So I can overcome some of the limitations that I would have if I tried to use the fill handle to repeat a pattern. And instead I can copy a range and then paste it into a selected area for it to repeat. What about the pattern that I have here for F where I've got three, six, nine. Well, I'm going to use my fill handle here and see what happens when I drag this down to 20. And when I drag this all the way down to 20, what I see is, oh, look at this. It is increasing by threes. So Excel does recognize the pattern that I've got here when I'm going up by a certain number of values. And Excel repeats the numeric pattern that it finds. Now, what would our results be if we click in G1 through H3 and we drag these down below? You might be able to guess at this already we don't see the kind of increment that we're expecting either in the letters or in the Roman numerals. So how can we go ahead and go up in alphabetical order? And how can we also go up in Roman numeral order? Well, that's what we cover in the second part of this exercise. There are a few ways we can use formulas to get the kinds of patterns that we want. You may use this only rarely, but it might be nice for you to know that this is a possibility. I'm gonna click into cell I1 and look what I've got in here, just the letter A. But now I'm gonna move my cursor down, just press the down arrow, and now I'm in I2. And I see that I have the letter B here, but I've also got a formula. Now this formula has two nested functions, a function inside of a function. Now this interior function, which is code, and inside the parentheses is I1, what that does is it looks in cell I1, it finds the character that's in there, and it turns that character into a code. Now every character that you see actually has a numeric code. Now you don't have to know this, but the code for capital A is actually 65. So once code I1 returns a 65, then the plus one turns 65 into 66. Now what char does, the car function, is it takes this value, 66 in this case, converts it back to a character. Well, if A was 65, what do you think 66 is? It's B. I'll press enter here, and I don't want to uh, click and drag on the fill handle in I1, but I do want to click and drag on the fill handle in I2. And so if I grab this and drag it down to, well, let me go down pretty far here. I'll go down to, um, oh, maybe 35, and we'll see you know, how things look. 
and all of a sudden in here I can see whoa I've got all of these different values being calculated here all the way down to Z and then oh look what happens here so at the end of Z uh, actually it doesn't start lowercase letters right away it starts with a bunch of different symbols and then uh, it's not until 33 where I see lowercase a B C and that continues in lowercase letter alphabetical order now we started out in I1 by typing the value A in here. Now, if I go and double click on my formula again, which is in I2, we can see what this does is it looks at I1. And when we use the fill handle to propagate the formula down below, what we did was we increase I1 to I2, I3, I4, and so on. Well, I wonder what would happen then. I'm just going to press escape to get out of this and go back into I1. If I change this to, say, the letter J and pressed enter, look, everything is being recalculated because my formula starts in I2 by saying, OK, let's look at J. Let's get a code associated with that add one to the code and then take that code and convert it back into a character, which is why I get L, M, N all the way down here. And I see my uh, lowercase letters start. So lowercase letters come after the uppercase letters and after these few symbol characters in here as well. Great. So now let's take a look at cell J1, which contains an I, and we want to treat that as a Roman numeral. We actually have a, a function that says row, and then inside of that it says one colon one, and then we've got this function that says Roman in here, that returns Roman numerals. By the way, if you're ever curious what these functions do, if you highlight the word and then just click on the little help that you have under here in the formula bar, you'll get some Excel help that will show up, and this tells you exactly what this function does. It says it will convert Arabic numbers, which are standard numbers, to Roman numerals as text. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to uh, create a sequence in here that starts at one and goes down two, three, four. Unfortunately, I can't just put a one in there and have that number one inside sequence automatically. But this is a little trick that you can do in Excel. And again, you'll rarely use this, but it's nice to sort of have this in your bag of tricks. If you do row one colon one and you drag down an autofill, one colon one becomes two colon two, three colon three. And this function will actually return for one colon one, it will return one, two, three. So it's just a trick to get a sequence into autofill. And if I want to try that here just in J3, I can say equals, if I say equal row one colon one like this, and then click and drag down, I can see I'm incrementing from two, three, four, five, six. So I'll clear those values out because I don't want them. But I'm going to click back in J1. I'm going to grab on my fill handle here, drag below. And when I have my interior value incrementing by 1, so it starts out as 1, then in the next one, this row, it's going to be 2, 2. And if I move my cursor down below, I can see indeed it is. Then 3, 3. What this actually is going to do is it's going to return 1, 2, 3, respectively, and continue all the way down with that pattern. And it takes that number and converts it to a Roman numeral. So sure enough, I can see that these Roman numerals are being incremented down here. Pretty neat. What about lowercase Roman numerals? Well, we can do the same thing here, but after I identify something as a, a Roman numeral, I can go ahead and use this lower function. So if I click on the blue hypertext here, it'll pull up the help for the lower function. And as you probably suspected, it takes any text and converts it to lowercase. Now, another thing that you might notice is that we've got a set of nested parentheses. Now, Excel helps us out a little bit by color coding the matching parentheses, but you do want to make sure that you've matched up these parentheses. So there's one set of parentheses on the outside for the lower function. Then inside, we've got the parentheses for the Roman function. Then we've got another set of parentheses around the value 1 colon 1 inside of this row function. I'm going to press enter again. I don't want to make any changes to this, but if I click on K1, grab on the fill handle, or if I just double click it, that will do an autofill all the way to the end. And Excel takes a look at the row just to the left, which is the J row. And the very last filled in cell there is 44. So it stops the 44th row. And we can see, indeed, I've got all lowercase letters here. Now, there might be some situations where you want to have either a period at the end of what you've incremented, or you want to have a parenthesis at the end of what you've incremented here. So I'm going to click in cell L and let's look at the difference in my formula between this particular cell, which is cell L1, and then I'll escape out of this and I'm going to go back over to J1. So J1 has Roman row 1 1, I'll escape out, and then L1 has Roman row 1 1, but then I've got the ampersand symbol, quote, period, close quote. If you take a look at the result that we're getting here, when I press enter, what do you think the ampersand does? 
Well, it just adds the character to the end of whatever value that I get. And that's the character that's inside of these double quotes here. So um, what this is going to do is it's going to evaluate the same thing that I had before, but it's just going to add a period on the end. So again, the ampersand is sort of the equivalent of a plus sign, but for characters, it says append the character onto the end, or um, there's a technical term called concatenate, to meaning just add the characters onto the end. And inside the double quotes, this is the character or the group of characters, you can put multiple characters in here too, that you want to append to the end. Now, if we take a look at what we did with I, you might even think, you know, hey, can I tell what's in here before I click on it? And sure enough, when we double click, we see we've got um, the same formula that we had had in M1. It's the same formula that we had over here in K1. But our formula for M1, if we go back over to M1, has ampersand and then it's got in between the double quotes, the closing parenthesis or the right parenthesis. So I'm just going to click and highlight cells L1 and M1 double click on the autofill handle. Sure enough, we see we've got an increment here and every value for the uppercase Roman numerals has a period at the end of it. Every value for the lowercase numerals has a right parenthesis. So hopefully you understand now how autofill works, how you can create sequences in Excel, and how you can create some sequences for things that Excel doesn't know automatically, like Roman numerals, lowercase Roman numerals, or alphabetical order. Keep at it.